listening to me and if you are in the Detroit area at 3 o'clock we will be at 3012 Mile Road in the city of Warren, Michigan at 3 o'clock today to hear the blessed word of the Lord and it is one church in three locations 4007 Lancaster Avenue in the heart of the city of Philadelphia on the west side and here at Azusa Temple 3637 West Town Road. Thank God for all of you. The word of God is recorded in Genesis 22. Amen. I would be remiss if we did not acknowledge the presence of the founding mother of the Apostolic Church of the True Growth Fellow in Philadelphia. She is with us. She came. She was Bishop Dunlap's chauffeur during his trips on a Founders Day celebration for about six years there in New York. Elaine Henry Lewis. Let us say amen. amen. Notation. Mandy will make a notation. Bible classes on Tuesdays. We're moving it back to Tuesday because we do have a ministry, outreach ministry at the uh, House of Commons, I think it is. And that's on Wednesday. We don't want to interfere with those young men who get ministry from uh, Deacon Johnson and Minister Grafton every Wednesday. So we will move on Tuesday night. So join us here. We give honor to
Thank you, Elder Hardy, for preaching on last week. The preacher said you blessed him immensely. We appreciate it. Verse number 22. Chapter 22, I'm sorry, verse number 11. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, and he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thy anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him for a burnt offering instead of his son. Let me see the presence of the Lord. I want to talk to you all from, from a passage of scripture Amen. there in the book of Genesis I want to talk on the subject there's a blessing in the bush I get your neighbor virtually and say there's a blessing in the bush Now, Abraham is an interesting character. He is a person that functions first in ultimate faith, and then his faith wanes. He's up here one day, Tim, and the next day he's down here. His first encounter with God, first encounter with God is when he is in the land of the earth of the Chaldeans, he encounters God. And I, I believe all of us have an initial encounter with God. Most of us feel that our first encounter with God is when we get baptized and we receive his spirit. We have a phenomenal experience, and that is the first experience with God. But I, I, I beg to differ. I believe God all of us can look back over our lives and see something that had happened prior to coming to the consciousness of God where God dealt with us. Uh, he spoke to us. Something happened significant in our lives. In Abraham's case, he, he talks with God as the Lord spoke to him while he was in the land of the Ur of the Chaldeans. Can I break that down? It would not be called the land of the earth of the Chaldeans for you. It would be called uh, the garage nightclub for you. Maybe I'll get to some of your journey. It would be called the Mustang Bar for some of you. Now it's getting tight now. It might be called Gregory's, not to get dinner, but to get something else. He called you while you were at, and, and because the black and tan, we had, forgot about that, for the elks. And so that we might be somewhat parochial and just talk about people born and raised in Lansing. It might be at the Peace and Rock. For Gary, it might be at the Jolly Six Club or the 50 Grand. If you can't say amen, Gary say ouch. Hallelujah. Everything else is down. Hallelujah. Praise the name of God. So there, there was somewhere. Amen. So it wasn't no club. Well, it might, if, if it was somewhere that you were in a place where God was not there, it could have been in the basement. It could have been in a basement party. Amen. With your Isaac Hayes records, albums. Amen. And your Bob Marley smoke going up in the air. 
for God found you somewhere. Amen. And he spoke to you, but at the time he spoke, you perhaps did not answer the call. Take me down. Did not answer the call. You avoided God. You didn't properly hear what God had to say. But God kept knocking at your door. Hallelujah. He was not like the man that you owed money knocking at your door. And you just peeked out the place like no one was at home. He left, but God came back. Thank God that God came back. And he kept knocking because God is going to always get his point over to you. Some sooner than later. Abraham is conscious of God. He just didn't know who God was. He's first of all worshiping the stars, the moon, the sun, and all of the planets because the Chaldeans were known as stargazers. They thought that there was power in the stars. Before y'all dog Abraham out, I need everybody to read horoscopes in here. Amen. If, do I have any Pisces in here? Cancer, Libra. Well, you just like Abraham. You, you were appropriating divineness to that which was created. And if you weren't reading stars. You were reading the palms. You were opening up your Chinese cookies. And whatever it told you, you believed that because you were somewhat superstitious. You just didn't know who you were worshiping. The uh, Greek had a sign to the unknown God, D.D., and Paul said, that's the God that I serve. You just don't know who it is. You worship the creature more than the creator. Abraham was a star gazer. But God didn't leave him where he was. Hallelujah. I think you ought to celebrate those moments at the garage. Or at the bus stop. Or at the Mustang bar. Amen. They don't have this club in Lansing now, but I heard it was one of those clubs called Joe Cavello's. Amen. I think you ought to celebrate the times you were there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because it becomes a reference point to where God had brought you from. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. He didn't leave you there. It's not where you've been, but it is where he has destined you to go. So Abraham comes from a background that is somewhat uh, not expressing faith. However, God does not leave him where he was located. God never leaves you in a bad location. He never leaves you in a dysfunctional circumstance. He never leaves you in an abusive relationship. He never leaves you in a ICU. He never leaves you by yourself. David said, Whither shall I go from thy presence? If I took the wings of the morning and flew to the uttermost parts, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. So God, what you telling me when you were where you were doing what you were doing with who you were doing what you were doing with, hallelujah. Can't get too graphic here, hallelujah, but let your imagination run wild. Praise the name of God, Brother Gary, amen. God was there, hallelujah, because he saw everything that we do. I remember running into saints from time to time doing things that they should not be doing. Standing in line, buying tickets that they should not be buying. Smoking stuff they should not be smoking. Saying words that they should not be saying. Can I get a witness in it? Oh, no. Loosen up here. I'm not talking about nobody because we have what all sin and come short of the glory of God. And so it, 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 it gets me when they try to avoid the scrutiny of my eyes. But when God 
see everything you do. Amen. So Abraham was a stargazer. But what I love about God, God chose him anyhow. So all of those that's dogging out, those that did this, did that, drank this, smoked this, did that, ran here, ran there, you ought to watch out who you're dogging out. Because God takes imperfect people and gives them the perfection of his presence. He takes broken people and put them back together again. He takes bruised people and healed them. He takes people discarded on the wayside and he brings them back together again. God specializes in brokenness. And what I really love about God, we don't have to go way back in the day. Stay out the 90s, stay out the 80s, stay out the 2010, stay out 2019, stay out of 2020, stay out of the spring of 2021, stay out of June, July, and August, and get right now down in September because God is a very present help in the time of trouble. What you're saying, preacher? I'm saying even now, God is still working on some of us. Even now, God is still cleaning some stuff up. Even now, God is still breaking us and molding us and making us because he's not through with us yet. Abraham was up here, amen, and God took him out of the land of the earth of the Chaldees and said, look for a city that has foundation and whose buildings make us God, and I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless your seed. I'm going to bless you to be a father of many nations. He now heeds to the call of God. But while he heeds to the call of God, stuff don't happen as quickly as Abraham wants it to happen. Stuff don't move as fast as he wants it to move. Healing doesn't come for some of us as fast as we want it to come. Our enlargement doesn't come as fast as we want it to come. Some of you just knew you would be a millionaire by now. Some of you just knew you would be married with two little kids out in the country on a picket fence somewhere. Hallelujah. Amen. Can I get a witness here? Some of you were married and then it didn't work out. It was not two little kids. It was five little kids. I don't know what your circumstance is, but we all had plans. We all had aspirations. We all had visions of greatness. Maurice, we wanted to be on top of the world. But stuff didn't work out the way we had it planned. And when it does not work out when we have it planned, there is a propensity to become frustrated, to become depressed, to become a man at a point, God, what's going on? And it's all right to talk to God and say, God, what's up? Man, we like to talk to God in all of these deep theological terms. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God who dwelleth between the two cherubims, the God, amen, who created the heaven and the earth, this God. We need to sometime come to God and say, what's up, God? Yeah. Hallelujah. You said you'd be with me. Lo, to the end of time, and you blessed me coming in and going out. What's up, God? Hallelujah. You can talk to God. Look at your neighbor and say, you can talk to God. What's up with this, God? Hallelujah. June bug is rolling. June bug is doing this, and June bug is doing that. He ain't never paid tithes. He ain't never been to church. He cussed like a sailor and seemed like he blessed. And look at me. David said, what's up with God? Because he said, my feet almost slipped looking at the prosperity of the wicked. What's up, God? You said you would heal my body. And not only have my body not gotten healed, it's getting worse. What's up, God? That person that hurt me, you said you will, vengeance is yours, and you would repay. You stopped me from catching that woman, hey amen, at the railroad track. Y'all know my story. When she called me the N-word, and I was getting ready to do something, hey amen, burglary, or run my car into her, and God wouldn't let me catch up to her. I, I never read about her in the newspaper. She probably still calling somebody the end word. But I stopped by to tell you God is not mocked concerning his promise. Whatsoever man saw, that shall he also be. God said, vengeance is mine. You just don't have the time table when God is going to do what he's going to do. Not only to the enemy, but to you also. If God said he's going to heal you, wait on your healing. 
I don't care how long it might be, God is never too late. He's always on time. He is an on-time God. God said you're going to get married. Hallelujah. Don't settle for stuff that ain't what you have aspired to. You got a vision of what you want. Don't settle for mediocrity. Don't settle for anything that does not look like the vision that God gave you. You are a princess. You are a queen. You are a precious Jew. You don't have to get the scraps from the bottom. As a matter of fact, you're not by yourself anyhow. You got God, and God is more than enough. You don't need a man to make you whole. You don't need a man to fulfill your destiny. If you get a man, that's just gravy or icing on the cake because what God has for you spiritually and what God has for you in your life, God is able to bring that to pass by your, didn't he save you by yourself? Didn't he deliver you by yourself? Didn't he, amen, give you joy by yourself? You didn't made it this far by yourself. You need to celebrate where you are, amen, before you get to where you want to be. Lord, I thank you for right now. I thank you for keeping me right now. I thank you for the joy that I have. I thank you for the blessing of singleness. I thank you, oh God, that I can call on you anytime I get ready. I wish I had somebody that would tell God, thank you for my circumstance, because the circumstance often reveals the grace of God. It reveals the completion of God. I'm complete in him. Paul said, in him I live. In him I move. In him I have my being. Not in a man, not in a woman, not in a job, not in people, but in God. your hands and shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. God calls Abraham and Abraham down. Praise the name of God. And he takes Abraham and says, get out of here and go to a place where I'm going to bless you. And even though the word said, I'm going to bless you. Hallelujah. The blessing did not come immediately. That's why you have to learn how to create what is called gratification and satisfaction with the revelation and not so much with the manifestation. What you talking about? Revelation is what God say he's going to do. Revelation is what God say he's going to do in your life. That's where your joy got to come from. Amen. Because there is a distance between revelation and manifestation. Revelation is what God said. Manifestation is when what God said comes to pass. And there's a period of time, amen, between revelation and manifestation. We need to be happy with the revelation. Why? Because God's word will not come back void. God's word is going to accomplish what it said. God is going to be God. If God said, I'm blessing you, don't wait for the blessing to get happy. Wait for the fact that he has given you a revelation. And based upon what God has already given you, that's where the shout come in. I'm, I'm not talking about musicians. I'm not talking about praise. I'm not talking about preachers getting you excited. Your excitement must come from the fact that God has given a revelation. There ain't no joy like revelation joy. There ain't no joy like a joy when God reveals himself and tells you that I'm going to bless you. You don't have to wait for the battle to be over or the tumor to shrink. You don't have to wait for the family for a man to get a clean bill of help from the doctor. The law have already said, by my strength you heal. That's the revelation. Hallelujah. Until the manifestation is here, I'm going to give you some grace to keep you. Because I know sometimes you get frustrated. I know sometimes you become weary in well-doing. But grace keeps you until the manifestation get here. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah for the grace of God. Oh God. And once I understand that, amen, then bring on the music. Bring on the tambourine. Bring on the praise dances because I need somebody to help me praise the Lord. Not amen uh, make me, but help me praise the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord with us. Put your hands together and shout hallelujah. I'm just about through here. 
Praise the name of God. There's a revelation upon revelation. Abraham leaves the land of Ur of the Chaldees. Got a revelation where you're going, Abraham. Go and look for a city whose builder and maker is Elohim. Where you're going, Abraham. I'm going away from my daddy's house. And when you reveal revelation to folks that did not get the revelation, it does not make sense to them. Hallelujah, because they didn't get the revelation. Oh God, hallelujah. They are operating on secondhand information. They don't know what God has spoken to you. They might call you, amen, spiritual. They might call you deep, but let them call you spiritual. And let them call, that's a compliment. Amen. I often tell the story where I've seen some people on Jolly Road in the middle of winter picking up paper. I said, these people in this town are out to lunch. They pick up paper. They want to keep the capital that clean on a January day. But they had what is called a revelation. What was their revelation, uh, uh, Brother Garrett? Their revelation was this. Hey Amen. That that paper Hey man had a picture of a man by the name of Benjamin Franklin from Philadelphia. Y'all know a ball in the middle with long hair on the side. They had the revelation. I didn't have the revelation. I only had, hey amen, a glimpse of what was going on. And so my behavior was driven by the fact that I didn't have a revelation. So I'm blowing at people. I'm calling them crazy. But as I got closer, hey amen, and saw Amen. The color of the paper they were picking up, which was money green, and saw that this man Franklin and some of his friends, like Ulysses Grant and Abraham Lincoln, were actually on the face of that. I got out of my car and I started picking up paper because now I'm armed with revelation. And when you're armed with revelation, you will do things that look crazy to people. You will shout when there is no music. You will dance when there is nothing to dance about. You will go to a hospital room and go to the waiting lounge and instead of looking at the television, you begin to say, praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh God, you begin to thank God when what you have asked him for has not yet come to pass. I'm looking for some anybody can praise God when the Amazon truck come up and dump stuff in your black lap. Anybody can praise God when you get news that the uh, job is yours and when you get news that the cancer, you're cancer free. But I'm looking for somebody that know how to praise God. Amen. When there's no Amazon truck, I want somebody to praise God when there is nothing. Man in the stall. Somebody to praise God when the tumor got large and not small. Somebody to praise God. Amen. Before the children get baptized and before they come to God, I want you to praise Him before. Because when you praise Him before, you are a saint that is dealing with revelation. It is opposed to manifestation. Anybody can praise the Lord when they got a pocket full of money. But I'm looking for some folks that ain't got nothing right now. Oh God, but yet there is something far greater than silver and gold. That's my connection with God. That's my revelation with God. And it don't make sense to you because you don't have the revelation. I understand that. But don't stop me from functioning in prayer. Don't stop me from shouting because you don't have it. Don't stop me from rejoicing because you haven't got the death. Don't stop me from saying, Lord, I thank you because I got the revelation. And when I got the revelation, I see where blessings don't appear to be a blessing. I see in a bush. Don't look like no blessing. But it's a blessing because God put it there. Whenever God puts something in your life, you better count it all a blessing. That's why he said, be careful how you talk to strangers, because you might entertain an angel unaware. I'm blessed in the singing. I'm blessed in the field. And because I'm blessed, ah, God, God, I'm looking for a blessing now. I want to be a blessing now. Take my 
my time. Yeah. So do I listen to Calvin or do I listen to Revelation? Now, tell me, huh? people tell you to do things that you should do. Now, but God tells you to do things that I tell you to do. And some things I tell you to do don't make sense. Now, because if they made sense, Bernal Carter, all the time, that wouldn't develop your faith. Now, you're doing it based upon your knowledge, now, your intellect, your experience. Now, if I pop two Tylenols, now, amen, I'm going to sleep good. Now, oh God, if I get chemo, hallelujah, I get radiation, I'm going to get rid of this tumor. Now, oh God. If I submit my children to counseling and let the shrink talk to them and have what is called conflict resolution, you're going to get what you want. If I let my lawyer determine how much money I'm getting from the lawsuit, you might get 50 or 60 dollars. But when you make up in your mind, I'm not listening to a lawyer. I'm not listening to a doctor. I'm not listening to my friends. I'm listening to God. And whatever God said is what it is. It don't look like it. But God said it's blessed. And what I have blessed can't no man curse. What I have chosen for you, you won't know it was God. Amen. And when you know it was God, when it don't look like a way is out of the way. When it don't look like a the enlargement of the tablets where I love it when it don't look like that. Uh, because if you really want to glorify God, get yourself in a situation where it don't look like it. Uh, well, God, here you are, uh, raising the dog uh, as a single dad uh, at the time. Uh, didn't look like it. Uh, she's going to graduate from college with double degrees. Uh, but when God uh, is on your side, uh, when God is on your side. It don't matter what it looks like. Uh, right now you sit there and all of a sudden uh, your hand go up uh, and somebody said, well, he ain't walked the furniture yet. I ain't waiting on the preacher to walk. I ain't waiting on the preacher to get through so I can get out of here and begin to exercise the authority and the power and the anointing uh, and the revelation that God has given me. I can't wait to leave church. Y'all talk about I can't wait to get Church. Your greatest joy is not coming to church. Your greatest joy is when I leave here because I'm armed and dangerous. I got some anointing. I got some power. I got some authority. I got healing in my hands. I got a word in my mouth. I got a weapon that's not comfortable. I got to go somewhere and declare that which is wrong to declare it right. a little while. Yeah, God, I feel a little hard on me. And you feel like getting, getting, getting wild with me. There's a blessing in the bush. I'm up here, Abraham, when he calls me. But I'm down here when I look in the bedroom. And I see an old, old woman that cannot bear any children. I'm down in the valley. But I'm in the plains of memory. And I'm pushing 90 years old. And the revelation have not yet come to pass. I'm down here. Oh God, Aaron, you should be a millionaire by now, but it's coming. Oh Lord. Amen. I'm down in the valley cave. Amen. Trying to raise these children. No help from daddies. No help from nobody. But I heard the writer say I was once young, but now I'm old. And I've never seen the righteous beside me nor the seed that grave. No. I want to talk about the testimony of Lady Maxwell. I heard when she said, with tears and eyes, I want us children no. if I to be saved. I want them no. to walk in their destiny. No. But I want you to change that. No. Instead of saying what I want, no. 
I want you to say they are. Amen. I know what grammar and English tells us. That that which is not now. Like I'm a professor in here, so I gotta check my English. Amen. There is what is called present tense and past tense and future tense. And what she's saying is future. I want my, I got another teacher back here already. I want my children saved. Now, how she constructed the sentence about or the statement he did, amen, it implies future. Now, but oh God, now, you got to go outside of the boundaries now, of grammar now, and say right now, now they are saved. Now, right now, now, they are walking in knowledge. Now, what are you talking about? Now, they still smoke weed. Now, what are you talking about? Now, they still drink. Now, what are you talking about? Now, they still, uh, whatever your child is, they are still taking. Now, hallelujah, but the Bible tells me, now, speak those things which are not <laughs> as though they were. Now, I don't care if you say I'm psycho. Now, I'm going to do what God said to me. He's a preacher. Now, Oh God, he's a demon. Hey Amen. She's got it together. Now, well, God, now, you remember when the Lord created the heavens and the earth? Now, Moses said the earth was without form and void. Now, God didn't say that. Now, Moses said that. Now, but God said, let there be light. Now, Oh God, now you got to get in your mind, Evangelist Josephine Brown, now, that I'm going to speak life now, and not death. Now, I'm going up here to worship God. Now, I'm going up here to sacrifice for God. Now, what you're going for, because God told me to go. Now, what you're going into Mount Moriah for, God told me, and I'd rather obey God than to obey man. Now, Whatever God tell you to do something, now, you got to do it. Now, if God tells you now, to go get some oil now, and uh, lay hands on yourself, uh, lay it how much time you have? Now, praise the name of God. Now, then you do just that. Now, but I want to tell you something. Now, the Lord told me now, to go lay hands on my sons. Now, hallelujah, even though they're grown. Now, couldn't get to them. Now, so what I decided to do, I saw a picture. Now, hanging on my wall. Now, I anointed the picture. Now, you got to anoint something. Now, if your child is a boss child, now, anoint something. Now, because it's not the anointing of the oil. Now, it's the obedience to God. Now, if God tells you to do something, now, you got to say, Lord, I'm going to do it. Now, I'm not going to let my child die. Now, I'm not going to let my dream and my vision end right now. now I'm going to purpose in my mind. Now, and I'm going to do what God said to me. I'm not going to lose my mind. Now, I'm not going to lose any sleep. Now, I don't care who died. Now, I don't care who had not made it. Now, I don't care who we buried. Now, and I know you think like that, some of y'all, uh, when we prayed for sycamajig. Uh, I don't understand uh, what happened to sycamajig. Uh, but right now, I shall not die. Uh, but I shall live uh, to declare the glory of God. Uh, oh, God, uh, get up into the mountain, Abraham. Uh, get up there. Uh, don't tell your wife. Uh, don't tell the deacons. Uh, don't tell the brotherhood. Uh, don't tell the sisters. Uh, you can't tell everybody what you're doing. Uh, don't tell hubby. Uh, don't tell any man pastor. Uh, but you got to learn how to tell it to Jesus. Uh, oh God, uh, I want to step on it right now. Uh, but if man can't, don't tell me, don't do that. Uh, do it after we go off the air. Uh, but praise the name of God. Uh, amen. He didn't tell nobody. Uh, didn't even tell his son uh, Isaac. Uh, some things you got to keep a secret. Uh, oh God, uh, don't put it on Facebook. Uh, don't send a text message. Uh, but tell God uh, all about your troubles. Uh, amen. So Abraham goes up and uh, sounds his ass. Uh, amen. Takes his son. Uh, his son. Now, 
not a revelation, but he gets a visual inspection. And there's a difference, lady, between revelation and visual inspection. Visual inspection is what you see with your eyes. I see the wood. I see the altar. I see the fire, but I don't see the sacrifice. Let me tell you about visual inspection. Oh, God, there's no rain in the sky. There's not a cloud in the sky. But go look again. I don't see nothing in the sky. But when he goes the seven times, Sir Penis do it. He sees a cloud about the size of a man's head. I don't see how it's going to work out. But God told me to go for it. Look at your name and say, go for it. Oh God, I'm trying to close it here. Amen. I don't see nothing. But that's because Isaac was functioning off of visual inspection. Our King Griffin, he says this. We walk not by sight, but by faith. Oh God, we see through a glass darkly. We only know in part. But when you put your spiritual eyeglasses on, Tina, you'll see stuff that nobody else sees. You'll feel stuff that nobody else feels. Yes, you will. And when you see stuff that nobody else sees, and you feel stuff that nobody else feels, they don't understand it. But your revelation tells you, God will make a way somehow. Go ahead. He tells his son, God will provide himself a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what revelation will do for you. It'll make you talk spiritual. It'll make you talk in faith. I don't see where it's coming from. God gonna make a way somehow. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. But the Lord will make a way somehow. Now, I don't know where the money coming from. But the Lord said, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. I, I, I got to go, Calvin. I don't know how the Lord going to work it out, but he's going to work it out some way and somehow. Oh, God. With the Lord. For himself, he's not operating in faith. To the heart, his son tied him down to the altar. We not only want to be hearers but doers of the word. He puts him on the altar, takes his knife out, then the killing. Because if God asks for it, I don't understand why. Somebody said, Abraham knew God was going to make a way. Yes, he did. Even if he would have took Isaac, he would have had to bring him back to provide a sacrifice in his stead. He takes Isaac, ties him down, and out of the voice of the atmosphere, the Lord said, still man, Abraham. The Lord got a lamb in the bush. Look at your neighbor and say, a blessing in the bush, in my bush, in my bush, hallelujah, shalom, shalom, I have to go, in my bush, there is a blessing, honey, you looking for
שלום, שלום, שלום.